I think having somebody like Javier who lift up other farmers and show them the ropes in this like peer-to-peer -peer learning is really important. 90 some percent of people working for their farms are Hispanic and they own very little. There's something wrong with that. Ninety-some percent of people that are working for their farms are Hispanic, and they own very little. Why is that? If 90% of us are the ones making others succeed, there's something wrong with that. Coming from Mexico and being a son of farming parents, my hope is that I would find something like that when I came to America. But in LA, there was no, no farming. So I ended up just starting to work at a Mexican restaurant and, and the food industry. Bottom up, climbed the ladder, did really well. That's when the uh, burst of the housing crisis came and we lost it all, including our house. That was a, a dramatic time of our lives because you're up, you're doing good, you're, you, you know, you think you accomplish the American dream and all of a sudden somebody pulls off the rag of your feet and there you are, you're down to the shed house and what do you do is either you sink or swim i'm kind of glad it happened because i decided to go ahead and finish my high school i was 43 man once i did that i started understanding that maybe i could do something better and that's when i got into landscaping growing things again and, and that's what triggered my background to go back to my roots. From the very first day that I started selling something, it was certified organic. And now it's gotten to where we're at, you know, nine years later. My operation started in 2012 with an acre and a half. And now it's up to over a hundred acres that we can plant. Obviously, the first obstacle was I, I just didn't have any money. And I couldn't borrow any money because my credit was minus 500. <laughs> but then what really kind of helped me a lot is just when I went through the ALBA program. So that kind of helped me get the farm started. Largely, the American uh, family farm is suffering. It has been for a, a long, long time. People just don't see opportunity there. And here we have, you know, s something like a billion acres of agricultural land, but it's just too hard to break into it. And yet here we have about one or two million farm workers. Uh, most are immigrants from Mexico and other parts of Central America. 
making, uh, I believe on average, somewhere between 17,000 and 25,000 per year for work that we could only imagine doing. What we're trying to do here is develop their talent and show what they can do. And uh, we've been doing that for 20 years to, I think, pretty good, pretty good success. Starting off with one to five acres is really more feasible for a small farmer. And there's just not a lot of land that's broken up into to small tracts of that size, since the ag parcels around here are bigger and historically farmed on a larger scale. I think having somebody like Javier who lift up other farmers and show them the ropes in this like peer-to-peer -peer learning is really important. Javier is definitely a role model and a trailblazer because he's been able to grow and expand his business where he's leasing out acreage to other small farmers who are just coming out of programs like ALBA. Lo que quiero es uh, dar la respuesta a todas las preguntas que ustedes tengan, porque uh, eso es lo mejor, como uno aprende, aprendiendo de alguien que ya lo está haciendo y de alguien que ya tuvo errores y que ahora está tratando de, de compartir para que ustedes no tengan los errores que, que, que yo tuve que enfrentar, ¿no? Gracias. I wasn't lucky enough to know someone that I could uh, uh, go to their, their fields and understand what they were doing. Um, so I think in, so in their case, I think they're probably lucky that I'm here and I can share my experiences with them. Ver al nivel que ha llegado Javier para mí significa mucho. Quiero algún día llegar. Yo llegué aquí a Estados Unidos cuando tenía 17 años. Toda mi vida he trabajado en el campo. El trabajo que yo tenía antes es que era nomás cosechar. Y al trabajo que tengo ahora no. Tengo que mirar desde la plaga, la siembra, la fertilizada, la cosecha y luego el mercado. Es mucha la diferencia. Pero me gusta trabajar, me gusta, disfruto de todo eso, entender más. Para mí no es, el trabajo no es demasiado pesado. Hay veces que hay días que sí tiene uno que trabajar de sol a sol. Me siento orgulloso de vender los productos. Así como la corto para vender a la gente, también la consumo. La consumo, ¿por qué? Porque es algo más saludable, tiene mejor sabor y se siente uno orgulloso saber que consume de tu propio producto en vez de ir a comprarlo en la tienda y hacerlo. Disfruta lo que haces, lo haces con gusto, lo haces con ganas, como dice uno. Todavía no llego al nivel que quiero estar, pero sí. Sí me siento orgulloso de lo que he hecho. My relationship to my crew, my workers, the people that make this happen, it's of appreciation, respect, and a hope for them to better their lives. <laughs> yeah. Give a little sun and start shh, going shh. get the grill going and maybe get some burgers and roast some of our corn so the crew can enjoy it. The corn is so sweet right now and it's a great opportunity for them to uh, feel proud about what we do. When everybody was leaving after our luncheon that we had, my God, all those people, every individual is a family. 
that in a way, I always know that it's kind of my responsibility to make sure that I'm driving the right way so they can have a good future. At the beginning, it was probably something inside me that said, you know, you came here, you went up here, and now you're down here. You gotta come up out of this and have to climb up again. Because all I wanted to do is get a farm going to make money to feed my family, to perhaps buy a house again, doing something that I truly enjoy and I had a passion for. I don't really know how I got to what I am. All I know is that it's, that it's been beautiful and it's been a lot of hard work. <laughs>